Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Steve Fulton, Chief Product Officer of SecureWorks. Steve, pleasure to be here with you today. Nice to be here. Thank you for taking the time. Certainly. So Steve, can you please define and explain XDR beyond the straight definition of extended detection and response? And how does it actually extend visibility to any organization? Sure. So we think about XDR in terms of uh, each one of those letters is, is critically important. Um, so the X for us is not just about uh, third party integrations beyond the endpoint, things like cloud and network and business systems, but also the extensibility of the platform. So how customers and partners can leverage the platform to create their own detectors, their own uh, integrations and automated workflows and actions. So that's kind of the X piece of it. The D for us is all about uh, detection speed and efficacy. So how quickly and accurately an XCR platform can detect um, true signal and what tends to be a, a sea of noise in the industry. Um, so how that can be done accurately in a speedy fashion and then how those detections are informed and enriched with additional context, things like threat intelligence, whether it's our own or third party uh, threat intelligence. Um, so that's the D. And then the R is really about automated response actions and end-to-end -end workflows. Um, and that's with integrated SOAR capabilities, orchestration capabilities that we believe are critical to be part of any, any uh, true XDR solution. So each letter is, is really, really important, uh, but underpinning all of that for us is really the design principle of having an open XDR platform. Well, that's certainly very important for every organization. Can you highlight some of the importances around that and why it's critical for every organization to have that? Yeah, you know, our, our point of view is that it means that customers can leverage their existing uh, security investments and they can integrate them easily with Tages XDR to, to better protect their organizations. That's fundamentally different than some other uh, vendors that force uh, a rip and replace approach mm -hmm. uh, where they only support the proprietary stack. Um, that, you know, we, we think that open XDR is critically important because it fundamentally leads to better security outcomes for our customers. And it does so in a way that generates much better ROI because our customers can leverage what they've already spent on in terms of security investment. I'll add on to that. Certainly a lot of organizations would look at a technology and say, you know what, I'll wait till we're ready to replace. And that sometimes leaves holes in the security areas because if they don't fix it now, they'll just band-aid it later or rip and replace, as you mentioned, but it'll be too late. So I think that's a very important point that you, you mentioned there. So we speak quite extensively in the security world about detections and threat detections. What makes for good threat detections? And beyond that, can you please give me some examples around this, whether they're being stories that you can share or actual real world experiences that you have? Sure, yeah, it's a great question. You know, I think about uh, what makes for great detections in a word, it's, it's diversity. Mm -hmm. So just as you want a diversified financial portfolio to manage your, your risk, uh, the same is true for detections. You want a diversified detector portfolio. You want both depth and breadth of detections, and you want detections that are purpose built to drive the best security outcomes. So in some cases, those are AI or more appropriately machine learning, deep learning types of detections. In some cases, it's uh, UEBA detectors. In other cases, more complicated uh, temporal rules-based detectors work best. Um, you know, some vendors in the industry will tell you that AI is, is a panacea. Uh, that is a fallacy. You really need the right tool for the job and the nice thing about SecureWorks, our 20 year history focused solely on the threat, coupled with our data science and engineering expertise really informs the types of detections that we use to drive those security outcomes for our customers. So in terms of examples, we've got a ton of them, but we have many, many examples where we are finding uh, true positives in our customer malicious activity in our customer's environment that no other tool uh, caught on their own. So again, with customers leveraging their own existing infrastructure, but those point products are, are missing the threats. And we see that uh, quite often, which just goes to the power of a true open XDR solution. Well, I guess to push it further, what would have been the pitfalls of organization had they not had this proper threat detection that you describe? Well, it goes to speed and, and efficacy of detectors. They're going to, as you mentioned uh, rightfully just a few minutes ago, um, the adversary will you know, mine the gap. They will find those holes in the in whatever point products that a, uh, a customer may have adopted, they will find those gaps and they will exploit them. Um, so that's one problem. If a customer has sort of a legacy SIM, uh, they may have a lot of data in those, but they're not generating much in the way of actionable security outcomes. 
So we view XDR as really the best of both those worlds, combining sort of those point products, providing uh, better, much better and faster detections that are missed by other point solutions uh, through our big data lake. And also uh, importantly, much faster uh, response actions and, and workflows for our customers. Well, certainly speed is a factor. So talking about speed, let's speak about automation for a moment. So how can one actually implement automated response when every organization is different? We talk about automation and how organizations are leaning towards that, but there's no one size fits all. That's impossible. It would never work and it would never really lock down or actually produce the right type of outcome that any organization would want. So how does one go about implementing it the right way? Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer here really speaks to our 20 plus year history of, of managing a SOC. So, uh, you know, we've seen a thing or two in that period of time. And so we know a thing or two about automation um, and not just automated response actions, such as isolating a host, but also automating fundamentally end to end workflows, um, including integrations with third party ticketing tools like ServiceNow or, or others. So a customer can quickly go from identifying uh, a threat to remediation and automated response um, very, very rapidly. You know, the great thing about the, the Tejas uh, platform is that it really enables the human intelligence that we've acquired over those you know, two plus decades to integrate with um, software driven intelligence and do these things very, very quickly. You have to do them to the point of your question, you have to do these in a, in a generic way so that you do scale uh, to a wide variety of customers environment, but you also have to allow the flexibility for customers to create their own playbooks, their own connectors, so that they can map sort of those capabilities to the specifics of their environment quickly and easily. I want to highlight one of the points you just mentioned, flexibility of a system. A lot of organizations and their technology out there, it's very rigid. And when it's rigid, people go about circumventing it and making it work for them, which again leaves holes in their security type system they're, they're creating. So it's critical for organizations as they develop their technology, something similar to this, that it is a flexible system that can be utilized in different types of areas that organizations need, want, or in the future will want to have. So that's great to hear. And that brings us to talking a little bit about you. As the Chief Product Officer of SecureWorks, I'd love you to share with our audience what your day-to-day -day like is at the company and what you love best about your role and just something great you'd like to share about yourself with the organization and your and our audience here. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. Uh, you know, for me, no one day is, uh, is like the other day. That's what makes it interesting. There's always something, uh, you know, challenging and new to, uh, to address. I love, of course, spending time with our customers and our partners and hearing about their challenges and how we can, you know, help them. Uh, I, I love to hear about uh, customers' unspoken needs. I think a lot of what customers, they won't tell you sort of the, the solution they're looking for, but if you listen, um, you can say, okay, what the, what the customer's really asking for is this thing that maybe hasn't been even created yet. So that, that's exciting for me um, is that interaction, that exchange, really hearing the customer's spoken and unspoken needs. Uh, and then of course the team, I'm blessed with having a great uh, leadership team and great leadership teams hire great you know, people to work for them and it's a virtuous cycle. And so everybody at SecureWorks is just so passionate about the mission that we're on and so passionate about protecting our customers. You know, that's a great way to start the day. It's a great way to end the day. And I think it's what gets all of us up early in the morning and keeps all of us up late at night as well. Oh, that's fantastic. And I guess as a last point, are there any additional points you'd like to share with our audience, maybe about the technology or products about SecureWorks offers or anything more about trends or what you're seeing in the cyber atmosphere today? I guess the only thing I'd mention is that, you know, XDR from the beginning, we didn't call it XDR, the platform we built, but it's what the industry has sort of uh, called the solution today. We always viewed it as a big data problem and the big data problem needed a big data platform. And you have to start from that from the ground up, because if you don't, you're going to run into scale issues, you're going to run into quality issues, you're going to run into speed and, and efficacy of detection issues. There's just a laundry list of things that if you don't design, build an architect for a big data uh, problem like XDR, uh, it's going to fall over pretty quickly. And I think we see that with some, some vendors in the space that sort of try and grab the XDR label uh, unsuccessfully. Um, but that was the vision from day one for us. So we're excited about uh, where the market is going. We think we're well positioned to, to win it because of those reasons. Wonderful. Well, Steve, thank you so much for sharing your insights with our audience. And it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you. And thanks for all the great questions. Pleasure.